the book of Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 1. Uh, today, we'll um, start from the Amplified Version. I just wanted to read that um, scripture today from the Amplified Version and um, uh, give you a, a recap from last week. Amen. I pray that this, uh, this eight pillars of faith are helping you to just to, again, realign some things and get a new perspective about how your faith works. Amen, amen. Because again, faith is, it is crucial to our, um, our progress and how we move strategically throughout, throughout our life as a believer um, and growing in our relationship with God. And that's really what it's all about, really making sure that we are growing in our relationship with God, strengthening our relationship with God, knowing how to use our faith to make it from one point to the next through our life journey. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, again, uh, Hebrews chapter number 11, verses 1 through 2 in the Amplified Version. And it says, Now faith is the assurance or the title deed, the confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen or the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. Verse 2, for by this kind of faith, faith the men of old, they gain divine approval. Amen. 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 Again, it just this is the the last part of the eight pillars of faith, and uh, just uh, just as a, a a rewind or recap uh, from last week, uh, we shared the the first uh, 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 pillar, which was the fact that faith it is the the foundation of change. It is the foundation that. Uh, sets the course of change in your life. And the second thing that we share, that faith, it clarifies your focus. It clarifies your focus. Your faith, it clarifies your focus. And then the third thing that we shared on last week was faith, it aligns your purpose with the will of God. Your faith, it literally aligns your life's purpose with God's will. And then the fourth one, that we share it is that faith it empowers us to trust God faith it empowers us to trust God amen today I wanted to pick up from from uh, from that from that part there and um, the first the first well the fifth one <laughs> the fifth uh, uh, pillar that I wanted to share is that faith will move you to give sacrificially. And, and, and how do I know that? Well, verse number four in the Passion Translation, it says, faith moved Abel to choose a more acceptable sacrifice to offer to God than his brother Cain. And God declared him righteous because of his offering of faith. And by his faith, Abel, he still speaks, my God, instruction to us today, even though he is long dead. My God, that's a powerful verse. His sacrifice is so much greater that it still speaks to us today. Abel, when you go back and you look at the passage back in Genesis, Abel's sacrifice, he, he, he was not afraid to give to God his best. And, and out of his best, and that was really was out of his heart, the purity of his heart, he reverenced and trusted God with the best that he had. And I just, can, I just believe as we continue to grow, as we can continue to grow in our faith and as we grow in our lives, that we must continue to make sure that we're offering God the best of our lives sacrificially. And um, as we're going and in, even in, 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 as we are looking at doing various things in our lives, 
and even in our church, make sure that you make sure that you pay yourself first. Amen. Amen. What do I mean by that? Make sure you put a, some putting putting something to the side. Amen. And and I want to speak to the to the young adults today. Amen. Those who are in your twenties, if you're between, matter of fact, lift your hands up up if you're between if you're between eighteen and thirty. Wow. So I saw some lying hand. Oh. <laughs> If you're between <laughs> if you're between 18 and 30, <laughs> if you're between 18 and 30, you are in a, you are in a great stage of life, we, where you are able to now start putting aside some money. If you if you're receiving an allowance or something, or if you have a part-time job, start putting some money to the side where you don't even don't even mess with it. Within a year, I mean, within a year, if you really, if you make a thousand dollars, well, no, no, I'm gonna take it back. If you make a hundred dollars, or you put a hundred dollars to the side, and at the end of the year, you have how much? Twelve hundred dollars, right? Over a thousand dollars, right? Is my math right? $100. I'm going to break it down for you in increments. In increments. If you just put $25 a week, I'm, talking to, I'm still talking to young folk. And some of us older, we, some of us need to catch up. I'm one of them. I need to catch up. Just put it to the side. Put it to the, to the account. I was looking at, my, uh, put, looking at something this week. I said, mm, I got to catch up. I got to catch up. Sometimes you have to defer some things that you want to do for yourself right now. You know, defer some things. And, and I'm telling y'all, what you do now, you're going to set yourself up for a great future. So when you get to the age where if you're not married, by the time you get married, you won't have to struggle. When you have, some things won't be a struggle. I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to help somebody. You don't have to. You don't have to get Michaela. You don't have to get the iPhone 10. She'll get me later. Oh, she gonna get me. Oh, she gonna get me later. My daughter, my baby, love to spend money. And you know where she got it from? She got it from me. Confession is good for the soul. I was trying to figure out what is what's wrong with this girl. And I had to start fussing at myself. It's my fault. <laughs> she 50% me and 50% her. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And I said, okay. I said, I can't fuss at her too much. But I'm trying to help us, you know. Yeah. Give to yourself. If, as you sacrifice in your young age, man, you'll be better off later on. And then, as you do that, as, as you begin to look at how you honor God, it won't be a struggle. As you start earning income, and as you start earning good income, it won't be a struggle to honor God. Uh, this might, be the, this might be the hardest part of the message. So the, the rest of it is going to be good, I, I guarantee you. <laughs> but I, I just need to help us. I need to help us. Uh, let me keep going. When you give sacrificially, it's a sign of your faith and your reliance on God and his word. And what it does, it solidifies your position as a believer. That's how, when you look at the life of Cain and Abel, it solidified his testimony and how Abel still speaks to us today through his sacrifice. What a, what a testimony of faith. His brother, was, he was so uh, angry at the, the pure motive of his brother. Yeah, yeah. 
that he killed them. And there will be some things in your life that will make you envious of others. It will make you try to um, uh, uh, get over on people, to do anything, to make yourself advance, to be better. The devil is a liar if that is named among the believers. Hallelujah. If anything, we need to be making sure we're looking out for each other as a community of believers. Hallelujah. I'm making a promise. I will never take advantage of the people of God. I will never do that. I just believe that God will sustain me. He will give me wit. Matter of fact, he's already gifted me to do multiple things. And I'm going to talk about seven streams one day. And I'm going I'm to I'm work with that. I'm going to work with that. I'm going to work with that. I don't know when it's coming, but y'all hold me, hold me accountable to that. I'm going to talk about the seven streams. And uh, uh, I'm going to help us. We're going, boy, we, we're going somewhere. We, we are growing strategically. What did I say? This is the year of strategic fulfillment. Hallelujah. And there's some things that have to be strategically fulfilled now for us to continue to go, to go higher and higher and to reach other people. Hallelujah. To do the work in the kingdom that we're strengthening and we're able to strengthen others. Glory to God. Let me move on because I got some more to go. Hallelujah. Your faith, it is an inheritance. Somebody say it is an inheritance. It is passed on. To others and we are recipients of the inheritance of faith my God from Zion we are we stand on the shoulders of the, the, the men and, and the women in the book of Hebrews and I, and I challenge you to go back and look at the book of Hebrews and you'll see the lineage of faith as it was passed down through generation through through generation and how they honored God it made it, it wasn't easy but they had a heart to honor God I want us to have a heart to honor God and everything that we do it, it, it ought to be reflective of our faith and our love for him the next observation the sixth observation is that faith it is the catalyst for promotion it is the catalyst. What, what I mean by that? It's the thing. It's like the bridge that carries us to promotion. Verse 5 um, in the Passion Translation, it says, Faith lifted Enoch mm, from this life, and he was taken up into heaven. Many of y'all know. And he never had to experience death. My God from Zion. He just disappeared. That's what the Passion Translation says. He disappeared from this world because God promoted him. Mm. For be before, before he was translated to the heavenly realm, his life had become a pleasure to God. He honored God so much with his life. I think the King James says he walked with God. My God, how many are really walking with God? My God, I mean, how many are really, why? I ain't talking about part-time. Because you know, some of us are part-time. Oh, it got quiet in here. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. I'm preaching the word. We got to learn how to walk with God through the highs, through the lows, through the tight spots. When we get mad with God, and we know, y'all know we get mad with God. God, why did it happen to me? Why you allow me to go through this? It's a part of the process. Walk by faith. What does the Bible say? The just shall live by their faith. Hallelujah to God. Mm. Enoch, he walked with God and he was promoted without experiencing natural death. 
He was just caught up. He just disappeared. <laughs> what an awesome testimony. That's in the Bible. It is our faith that will lead us to natural and spiritual promotion. It wasn't by accident, Pastor C, that natural promotion came to you. It's because of your faith and many others in here, things that you have experienced in your life, things that uh, opportunities that have presented themselves. Yeah, you had to go through some hard stuff before you got to that opportunity. But it is because of your faith it is because of your faith that your faith will keep you if you don't let it go. If you continue to walk with God, if, as you continue to honor God, my God, it will lead to natural and spiritual promotion. I'm looking for some spiritual promotion in the house. My God, God wants to elevate so many of us to, to, in the spirit. He wants, to, he wants to sharpen our discernment. He wants to uh, grow our spiritual relationships with him. And as we grow our spiritual relationship with him, we're going to grow our spiritual relationships with each other. We won't be so easily annoyed with each other. <laughs> but we'd be more apt to help each other grow. Hallelujah. Live a life or live your life as a sacrificial gift to God. Live your life as a sacrifice. God, whatever I do, I want to honor you. Whatever I do, I want to please you, God, with my life. God, let my life be an offering to you. Everything that I do, the words that I say, and that we got to watch the words that we say. We have to watch the deeds that we do. Hallelujah. To honor God. Have faith in the process because what happens is patient faith, it allows us to experience God's best. If you just allow yourself to be patient with God, because sometimes, again, as we all know, sometimes we got to have stuff fast. We want it to be done in our, in our timeline. <laughs> we got, I, I want it done now. And I know you can do it right now. And he can. But sometimes we just have to have patient faith. Patient faith. We need to go uh, back to the, to the fruits of the Spirit. And I believe as we exercise the fruits of the Spirit, it does something to our faith. Hallelujah. I think I said last week it expands our capacity. It, it gives us capacity to, to operate in, on, on a different level of faith and living. Hallelujah. The next observation is... That faith, I, I lost my track. Which, what was the last one that I left? <laughs> All right. Okay. The next one is faith, it enables us to please God. Verse 6, it says, and without faith living within us, it will be impossible to please God. Mm. For we come to God in faith, knowing that he is real and he rewards the faith of those, the Bible, King James, who did it diligently. I got to just work all that in there. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dil diligently seek him. But the passion... The passion translation, i got to give you what it says. It says to give all of their passion and strength into seeking him. You can really tell, the, you can tell those uh, people who are really diligently seeking God in the, and how they talk. They won't be complaining all the time. 
they will be living by faith. God, those people are getting on my nerves right now on my job. But God, I'm going to trust you for better. I'm going to trust you, God, because I know promotion is coming my, coming my way. God, I know this is only temporary. And you got to talk yourself through some stuff. Don't complain. Fake your way through some stuff. And I don't mean just fake it till you make it. I hate that term. I hate that term. No, faith it. F-A-I-T-H. Faith it until you make it. Don't fake it. You faith it until you make it. God, I believe you. I know I'm healed. I know I'm delivered. I know you're going to make a way. You got to speak life to the dead things in your life. Boy, I'm preaching hard. I'm stomping. <laughs> but you got to speak life to the dead things. Glory to God. Ooh, this is good to me. I love this. I love the word of God. Woo, hallelujah. But to please God, it means to believe in his transforming, transforming power in your life. And when you believe in God's transforming power in your life, it allows you to share God's transforming power with somebody else. Hallelujah. And our evangelism and outreach team, I'm excited about some things that are coming. And uh, I'm excited because I, I just, I know the time is now. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is a time of now faith. Yeah. And, 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 and faith without works is what? Yeah. I know I'm in the Bible. So we're working some things. We're faithing some things. We're declaring and decreeing some things. But we're also doing some things. Yeah. Hallelujah. What are you doing in your life? What are you doing in your life? That God, I, 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 I want to see some change in my life. God, I, I don't like the direction that I'm going in right now. Help me to change the direction. God, I, 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 I've been going this way, but God, help me. Renew my mind. Give me a plan of action. And when you ask, he'll give it to you. All you got to do is open your mouth. Yeah. Hallelujah. And he'll give you a plan. Hallelujah. He will, he will reveal his will and his way to you. To please God means that we seek him first in regard to everything that concerns us. And that means relationships, jobs, and opportunities. Seek God first. Whatever you are seeking to change in your life, Ask God first. God, is this, is this for me now? God, is, uh, is that person supposed to be in my life right now? God, is that job that I want, is that for me right now? God, am I supposed to open up this business right now or should I wait? Ask God first. And when you inquire of God, my God, he will answer you. Seek God first. Seek Him. Pleasing God means that we trust Him in the midst of adversity. And there's a whole lot of people in here who have gone through some seasons of adversity. And, and, and I, 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 I'll just say, I've been encouraged by your faith. Amen. I've seen some adversity. Yeah. I've seen struggles. I've seen health challenges. I've seen relationship challenges, members here and outside. But in the midst of what some people have gone through, there is a degree of faith that has kept us how many know God will really keep you? <laughs> Boy, I'm doing everything I can to stop from, to, from, from not running around this church. I, I just had a, 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 just a, a quick flashback. That he has, he has kept me through some stuff. 
I'm just, I'm just, I'm preaching and bearing my soul. <laughs> my God. Look at your neighbor and say, he'll keep you. Boy, I feel like running right now. He'll keep you. When you you make up your mind and you decide to trust him, God, he'll keep you. Glory to God. Yes, he will. He'll keep you in the midst of what you're going through. He'll keep you in the midst of the storm. My God. My God. Hallelujah. And when you do that, it is your faith that pleases God. My God, you're able to stand in the face of adversity. And I believe there's a lot of us that, have, that are still standing because of our faith, and we, were, we have stood in the face of adversity, some of the hardest seasons of our lives. And look at us, we're still standing. Uh, boy, if I, if I pass the mic, boy, we would break this place up in here today. Woo, let me, let me keep going. How many more I got? Oh, this is the last one. I can preach now. <laughs> the last one, the last pillar that I got to share, that faith gives us access to deeper revelations from God. The Passion Translation, verse number seven says, faith opened Noah's heart. And y'all notice I'm talking about various individuals. But in this verse, faith opened Noah's heart to receive revelation and warnings from God about what was coming. And I'm going to just pause right there. And I, and I think I started last week saying, do you realize how valuable your faith is? Your faith literally has the ability to connect with God, to receive revelation about things that are coming. Your faith, it increases your discernment. And God will sometimes, he will warn us about specific things that are coming. And in this verse, faith opened Noah's eyes and it opened his heart to receive revelation about warnings, about what was coming, even things that had not been seen before. Why? Because he stepped out in reverent obedience to God and what he did, he built an ark. Yeah, yeah. And when he built the ark, yeah. he was able to save himself and his family. And by his faith, I'm still in, in, the, in verse number seven, it's by his faith the world was condemned, but Noah received God's gift of righteousness that comes by believing. My God, your faith faith, it makes you righteous when you trust him. Glory to God. I want to encourage us, con continue to consult with God. Continue to seek godly counsel. Because sometimes you do need godly counsel here on the earth. You can ask God, but God also places wisdom within people who have gone through some things, have gone through some life experiences. Hallelujah. That will uh, cons con consult people as you make decisions that will affect you and those who are connected to you. Hallelujah. Your faith, it will lead you to make wise decisions when you don't know what to do. When you don't know what to do, ask God. When you run at the end of your rope, ask God. God! Don't do it yourself, because you're gonna we'll mess it up every time. God, what 
way do, which way do I go? God, should I make this move now or wait? And it's interesting, sometimes God doesn't speak. <laughs> and it's in those moments that I've learned when God doesn't speak, you know what you need to do? Stand still. If you want a deeper relationship, if you want a deeper revelation from God, don't, <laughs> don't, 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 don't consult the soothsayers and the mediums. I saw a movie yesterday. <laughs> and we had an awesome time. We had an awesome fellowship yesterday. And, 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 our, and our sister, she got in some stuff that she wish she hadn't gotten into. You got to watch you, who you consult. Because you will get in trouble. You will bump your head. <laughs> Literally and figuratively. <laughs> and you mess yourself up. What you do is you delay God's progress in your life to get to what you need to get to in his time. Hallelujah. Faith, it will even vindicate you when others make a false accusation against you. I'm trying to teach us how to use our faith. I must repeat that just one last time. Faith will vindicate you when others make a false accusation against you. How many been lied on at least one time? How did you respond? <laughs> Was you ready to put them up and duke it out? <laughs> Allow your faith to vindicate you. Because when you do this, you will suffer adverse effects. You need to do this. <laughs> Allow the Lord to vindicate you. If you're walking with God and you're worshiping God with a pure motive, you can easily do this. And you're not a punk. I'd, be, I'd rather be a worshiper than a punk. And I'm a worshiper. And what I know about my worship, my worship, it creates atmospheres. What I know about my praise, my God, it creates something. When God sees this, he responds. He responds to our faith. He responds to what we say. Ooh, my God, and the last thing that I got here, faith will save your life. I didn't even know how all that was in there. Look at your neighbor and say, faith will save your life. If you live long enough, your faith will literally save your life. If you let it, how you walk with God, how you worship God, how you praise God, the, 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 the meaningfulness of your relationship with him. Mm. It will be manifested. I got one, one last question for you. Where is your faith? Where does your faith stand? I hope after these eight pillars that it causes you to reevaluate your life and to see where you stand with God. I hope I hope it makes you a little bit uneasy and challenges you to look at how your faith works in your life and how you have been using your faith in a good way or maybe not so good. 
I hope it causes you to refocus and to even challenge yourself to look at yourself differently, but more importantly, how you look at God. Hallelujah. Do you trust your circumstances? Or do you trust what God said? I would rather trust what God said. And that's why you got to know what God says to you in your life. You got to know the voice of God. Hallelujah. So as I get ready to take my seat and pass the seat, she didn't know that she's going to do the altar call today because I need to go there and sit down and drink some, some ginger ale because I'm about to lose my voice. <laughs> But as I get ready to sit down, I got a few affirmations for you. Let your faith guide you towards making wise decisions on this year. Everything that you do, let your faith be a compass. Let it be a compass. And a compass, all it does is it, it, it lines you up with the correct direction. Let your faith elevate you to trust God more. Let your faith make God known to others. Let your faith take you to deeper levels of worship and devotion. And then the last thing, let your faith focus your attention to fulfill your purpose in life. And that's what it's about. It's about letting your faith guide you, letting your faith elevate you, letting your faith grow you. Because you know we're all growing. But let it grow you. Let it, let it, let it manifest. Let it, let it be manifested as it relates to your relationship with God and everybody else. I don't know about you, but I, I just, I know and I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that our faith is literally, it's going to make things happen in our lives this year. Amen. There were some things that, that, that didn't happen last year. There were some things that maybe didn't happen maybe five years ago, and I'm finishing, y'all can stand. But this year, my God, you have been instructed. You have eight pillars to go back to that will guide you, that will allow you to make some things happen. God's going to do his part. And I believe what God is doing on this third Sunday in February, that he has allowed many of us <coughs> to reevaluate how we look at faith and how we're going to walk out our faith for the remainder of our, of our days. This ain't the end, but this is just beginning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the year of strategic fulfillment. It's going to happen by faith and, <coughs> I'm sorry, it's going to happen by the actions, our actions, what we do. Come on, Pastor C, because I'm losing my voice. Amen. <coughs> Amen. At this time, the altar is open. Glory to God. If you need more faith. Hallelujah. To get through whatever you're going through, we invite you to the altar at this time. We have altar workers waiting for you. Hallelujah. We know we walk by faith, but sometimes we get a little discouraged. Hallelujah. Sometimes depression tries to hold us back. Hallelujah. But on today, hallelujah, let us pray for you as you walk by faith. Glory to God. The Bible says the just, the righteous shall live by their faith. But sometimes we get weary because of situations. Hallelujah. Sometimes we get weary because of life. 
Hallelujah. But how many know that God is able, glory to God, to bring you through, to carry you through, the, the hymn writer says, to carry you through. The altar is open at this time. Hallelujah. And if you just want to come to the altar and kneel and pray for yourself, you're more than welcome to do that at this time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Touch your neighbor. Ask your neighbor. You, you, you all right? You, you got enough faith? Hallelujah. Come on, touch him. You, you got enough faith? Hallelujah. Glory.